The following broadcast is an alternative video game program. Viewers should prepare themselves for games related jokes, nonsense, and general hijinks. the alternative world of video games today, the return of the greatest game ever, special forces games compete for military honours, we've got the making of an epic with Final Fantasy XI, and the delightful Kaylee Pearson shows Dan Stage who's boss. Alright there viewers, you know, I do love the pub, the choking fog of the cigarette smoke, the tedious conversation of alcoholic regulars, the thrill of the closing time punch up, it's a British institution we can all be proud of. Got a letter today from someone too young to sample its delights. He's age 10, he's called Tim Spader from Tunbridge Wells. Dear Dominic, I really want a PS2, but my mum says I have to wait until Christmas. How can I persuade her to give it to me now? Well, <laughs> it's fun you should write him, because I'm actually having an affair with your mum. So if you threaten to tell your dad about us, I reckon that PS2 will be down your chimney a lot before Santa will be. Oh, and remember, if you see your mum, tell her Wednesday, just after you go to school as always. Cheers. There are times when gamers like to throw caution to the wind, burn up the rule book and do something a little bit naughty. For that reason, today we're going to focus on the top five guilty gaming pleasures. At number five, it's Lara Perving in Tomb Raider. Now it's time to come clean. We all know Lara Croft's an attractive lady. There's no denying it. She's a looker. And if we're honest, who's not been tempted to find the optimum way to appreciate her beauty? After all, a few revealing camera angles doesn't hurt anyone, right? But this is a different matter. Making Lara crawl backwards, her rear undulating towards the screen. We know it looks good, but these are not the actions of a mature person. At number four, it's Natalia bashing in Goldeneye. Even though she meant well, Natalia was just annoying. She was hardly the most alluring of girlfriends and insisted on following you around like a crazed bunny boiler. So there came a point when Natalia had to go. It was for her own good, really. Of course, once was never enough, so you kept on thinking of increasingly disturbing ways of dumping the boring frump. You even made a game of it, judging just how many bullets you could get away with shooting at her before she collapsed in a heap. Though I have to say, looking back now, do we feel guilty? Nah! Find out what makes our number three and two spots later in the show. Okay, that's it, let's be having you time ago. Let me let you in a secret, viewers. Half the people aren't really going home, we're having what's called a lock-in. That means ugly people in chavs get booted out, the rest of us stay here till we're swimming in our own vomit. It really is great fun. More secrets revealed now in today's Behind the Game. If you look up the word final in the dictionary, you'll find it means conclusive, ultimate, finito. But with Final Fantasy now in its 11th incarnation, it seems the Japanese are happy to play fast and loose with the language. Final Fantasy I am Tanaka, a producer of Final Fantasy XI. When we first made Final Fantasy, role-playing games were not yet popular in Japan. The first game was released in 1990, and since then we've seen more fantasies than Geoffrey Archer's biography. How have the developers kept it fresh? With all Final Fantasy games, we've strived to develop new concepts and new storylines. The one thing that was a turning point was Final Fantasy VII, when we moved the series to the Sony PlayStation. The improved technology gave us the scope to make better games. It's this building process that has led to the current Final Fantasy. The real innovation for Fantasy XI was taking the series online, an idea that had been kicking around for ages. We started thinking about making Final Fantasy XI about five years ago. Online gaming had always intrigued us, and we just couldn't ignore the interest if it made for a good game. That's what we strongly felt. The biggest goal was making a deep storyline, and taking it in the direction of an online game. When we started the project, we didn't know that making online games would be such a hard job. When each of the series finishes, you think, I should have done this there, or I should have done that here. 
That's the motivation for making the next title. Hmm, interesting. Of course, I like it for the smashing orangey bit in the middle. Basically, the internet spread Final Fantasy all over the world. It used to be known only in Japan and the US, but finally it's everywhere, including Europe. I'd be happy if Final Fantasy introduces people to online gaming. Final Fantasy remains a whacking great jewel in the Japanese gaming crown, spreading around the world like benign avian flu. Let's hope they continue to ignore the word final. We troll through tabloids and men's lifestyle mags in search of the hottest ladies to stage our very own top totty dance off. Marsh, Tinder, Pearson, Hicks and Downs. Held over the series, five gorgeous girls battle it out to see who has the moves to match their curves. A look at the table shows Katie Downs retaining her position at the top with 303,635, with Joe Hicks a fair way behind her with 126,665. Welcome once more to Mr. Diamond's Boudoir, where I can feel the funk, I can taste the funk, I can smell the funk. Oh, actually, that's not the funk, that's me. Sorry about that. Um, we've got another lovely, ready to play, uh, Dance Stage Mega Mix, Euromix 2 thingy. Uh, Kaylee Pearson, welcome. Hello. Named after Kaylee, the song by Marillion? Yes, I certainly was. And I just salute your parents there. Fantastic job. Are you a fan of the song? It's I just remember the bit where it says Kaylee. Kaylee. Is, is, it too, it? is it too late to say I'm, I'm sorry? sorry? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> no. Oh, never phew. too late. That's right. <laughs> um, what did you look for in a man? What I looked for in a man. Three so things. he has a nice physique. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Tallish and preferably that wears a uniform. <sighs> My dad's a plumber. <laughs> I could get a job at Quick Fit. <laughs> I mean, that kind of your uniform. Oh, damn. Um, so, as far as today, these little dancing machines, have you got much experience with them? Well, I'm quite good with, with my feet and moving around. Seems I'm an ex-gymnast, I can be quite nimble. Uh -huh. We shall see how I get on later. Are you, where was your most of your experience? In the rings or...? No, on the no. floor. On the floor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, you <laughs> saved me a fortune in script writing there. Um, OK, well, if you'd like to see how Kayla does on our floor, then join us in part two. Before we go, there's just time to catch up with the three and two spot of our top five guiltiest gaming pleasures. At number three, criminal rampaging in Grand Theft Auto 3. It's one of life's great moments. The moment in GTA when you realise just how evil you can be. You can start by stealing a car, popping your proverbial criminal cherry, and after that there's no stopping you. You can quite literally open up the front gates of hell and unleash your own mini-apocalypse. The choice of mayhem is yours. You could do a little drive-by, you could solve the city's pedestrian problem, or get into a jokey little scuffle with the local rosers. Now we ask you, have you ever had more fun in a game? At number two, it's self-loathing voyeurism in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. It's Saturday night, the world is having fun, girls are running free, and you've decided to have a marathon session of MGS2. You ask yourself, why? Until you stumble across something intriguing in the kitchen area of the plant level. At first you think your eyes are deceiving you, but no, it's real! It's pictures of some of the most beautiful women in the world! Carmen Electra! Oh! And here's another one! Kelly Brooke! Posing elegantly in a bikini! Suddenly, it all makes sense! Our number one guilty gaming pleasure's coming up in part two. Coming up in the alternative video game show, me with one chin and cheekbones. Socom Navy SEALs goes head to head with Full Spectrum Warrior and the guiltiest gaming pleasure you dare not admit. But first, it's time to join commentator Stevie Morgan as Kaylee Pearson assists us in our super scientific, EU funded, intellectually valid dance challenge. Yes indeed folks, and it's Kaylee Pearson who gets us underway for our next dance challenge and as Dominic's told you, this is completely epically sound. But just look at how nimble footed this girl is and she looks as if she's having a great deal of fun as well, which is exactly what I'm having here too. But she's agile, she's 
very supple. And of course, that's what we look for in our girls who compete in this dance challenge. Those and a couple of other things as well. But I won't go into them just yet because she's putting together some terrific combos. And uh, she's also remembering to keep her hands on her skirt because skirt flapping is one thing that these girls have to be very aware of, or indeed something I'm very aware of actually anyway. But look at that, almost. But she's putting together some great scores here. This is a textbook performance by Kaylee Pearson here. Some terrific combos. She's jumping around as opposed to the step because this is all about technique. And if there's one thing this girl has got, it's technique. Just look at that. You can see where her gymnastic training has come into play. She's the dancing queen. She's the private dancer par excellence. Do you know what that means? Do you know what I'm doing here? It's called worship. Do you know why I'm worshipping you, Kaylee? Because I'm great. No, it's because I get a great view from there. No, it's not. It's because you took that game apart. You got in there, you straddled it, you showed it who was boss. No, I told you I was quite nimble. Well, yeah, it's that, that gymnastic training. Boy, do you want me to tell you, just to put it in perspective, okay? The best score so far has been Katie Downs, 303,000 and something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you got? How many? You got an idea? Have a guess. Twice amount. One million nine hundred and fifty-two thousand one hundred and five. I mean, that's not much then. No, yeah, not much. <laughs> An average day at the dance stage office for you. I mean, did, did, were you connected with the machine? Did you feel was your chi sensitive? I want to never go. Do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're too good. You're gonna start to make me look really bad yeah. on it. Uh, but that was fantastic. Do you think anyone's gonna beat that? No. One point nine million. Of course I won't. Just imagine if we if we kind of could convert that into some kind of cash prize. Well, <sighs> fantastic. But then again, imagine if I had a pony, I'd be a lot happier. You know. But I, I think you got a very good chance. Only two more people stand between you and our. But they've got massive breasts, so they might stop them from doing so well. Yeah, but so have I, and I'm still pretty good at it. <laughs> let's face it. Uh, sports bras. I think you'll find that's the future. Um, and you can. My nice strap, my man tape. boobs up. Oh, sell it when you just gaffer tape. A yeah, little bit stronger yeah. than sell tape. Anyways. Great, we've turned this into a DIY show uh, <laughs> as well. So uh, just to confirm, if we look at the league table, we can see that Kelly Pearson is just a country mile and a half ahead of the competition with a whopping 1.9 million plus points. Can she be beaten? Join us for stage four later in the series to find out. Howdy doody and welcome to another Head to Head where myself and the two ladies here take two g- Hang on! What have you got those on your face for? You're using masks to smuggle you into a G7 conference? And then you're going to hold the world leaders to ransom until they declare you two dictators for life? What then? What's your policy on education? Health! Ah, not so easy now, is it? You young revolutionaries today. Go get your boxes. <laughs> this week, the ladies are going all military on us. Cuddly is representing Full Spectrum Warrior, and in reply, Queenie has opted for SOCOM 2 US Navy SEALs. Round one. Graphics. SOCOM 2 is no slouch in the graphics department. The environments are detailed and varied, with a real sense of dirt and age. Character animation remains fluid even when the action heats up. Full Spectrum Warriors visuals go for all-out realism. A combination of small and large details like the texture mapping on the soldiers' uniforms and the vast crumbling cityscapes help paint a convincing picture of modern warfare. But which game do you think looks the best? Sixty-five percent of the hundred gamers surveyed said Full Spectrum Warrior had superior graphics. Round one goes to Full Spectrum Warrior. Two rounds to go. Full Spectrum Warrior then getting the nod in round one because the helmets are far more realistic. That's one to Cuddly. Round two. Lifespan. SOCOM 2 goes for the online route to keep you coming back. 
16 players, 8 on each side, can fight in 22 multiplayer maps, all of them designed to accommodate no-holds battles or a more careful fighting style. The later levels of Full Spectrum Warriors single-player campaign will keep many busy for ages, while the Xbox Live options include a cooperative mode against computer-controlled bots. But which game keeps you playing the longest? 61% of those surveyed said SOCOM 2 had the longer lifespan, so SOCOM 2 pulls even in round 2. One more round to go. So, Quinny pulls one back. Thanks to SOCOM 2, Navy SEALs being judged to have a lifespan akin to a Galapagos turtle who's eaten all his vitamins. One round to go. Gameplay. Using a combination of voice-controlled commands and third-person action controls, SOCOM 2 plays like a cross between a war strategy game and an all-out shooter, making it a solid choice for those who like to think and fight. On the other hand, Full Spectrum Warrior is purely for the war strategist. A more formal point-and-click system encourages tactical thinking, prioritising troop positioning and movement over open dogfights. It might not be for everyone, but fans believe it creates a more realistic experience. But which one makes for a more satisfying game? 57% of you said Full Spectrum Warrior offered better gameplay. Round 3 goes to Full Spectrum Warrior. Making Full Spectrum Warrior the winner. Two rounds to one. Oh, Queenie, 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 I know it's a very good game, but not good enough this week. Oh, listen, don't worry, I'm sure the forfeit sometimes is not as bad as you think it might be, yeah? Let's see what Cuddly's doing. Cuddly? Join us next time for another Head to Head! Now let's see what made the top spot in our chart of guilty gaming pleasures. It's something despicable, but let's remind you first of what missed out. At number 5, Lara Gazing in Tomb Raider. At number 4, Target Practice with Natalia in Goldeneye. At number 3, The Joys of Anarchy in Grand Theft Auto 3. And at number two, you, all alone with gorgeous lady posters in Metal Gear Solid 2. But the number one guilty gaming pleasure is to be found in... Super Mario 64! Don't deny it! We've all committed this sin. In the ice world, there's a penguin mother who's crying and croaking because her baby is missing. Now, being a kindly soul, you search the level and you found the little one. But on your return, there's a forked path on the road of morality. Do you A, be a goody two-shoes and give the baby back to the mother again and receive a star? Or do you B, walk to the edge of a precipice and drop it over? Congratulations! You've just entered a brand new world. You've nothing to fear but judgment day itself. In America, we were supposed to be doing this feature on NASA when hilariously our camera broke. Uh, the good news was we managed to spend the whole day shopping and that's where I picked up these little homey figures. Aren't they marvellous? Uh, the problem is it meant that when we got back to Britain we had to cobble together something else. This is it. You might think it's great being me, what with all the wealth, the massive house, the beautiful children, the lovely partner, but sometimes I yearn for the good old days when my life revolved around three things. Very attractive, scantily clad women, wine that fizzed, and sensible soccer. Oh yes! Back in 1992, Sensi was quite simply the uber pinnacle of gaming. Now this great classic is poised to rise again as a mobile phone game. So I went down to see developer John Hare to find out more, wallow in a bit of nostalgia, and more importantly, have a bit of a kick around. One of the things which, which I like most about Sensi Soccer years on is that we made a game to be international. So we made it to go out. I mean, Sensi World of Soccer had 80 different countries included yeah. with their proper leagues in from all over the world, which was totally not done in those days. 
Yes, back then you were lucky if you got to choose from half a dozen kids in the playground, including two fat ones. Sensible Soccer changed all that, cramming over 168 teams into its first release. And didn't we love it? The game bestowed the sales charts like a colossus. First for the Amiga, then later the Mega Drive, the Super NES and the PC. As Sensi Fever reached plague-like proportions, anybody who was anyone was playing it. <laughs> Look at the state in your back then. You look like you've kind of just come straight from drinking a can of special brew outside a supermarket <laughs> somewhere. It is quite simply the greatest football game ever. Football is the greatest sport in the world and this is the greatest game ever. Did I get paid tons of money to just basically wax lyrical about sensible soccer, do you reckon? Or was it? I don't remember getting paid a lot of money. I don't think you got paid anything actually. I think you were quite genuine. What is also good about Sensi is the fact that it is, um, there's, there's a, why I feel a lot of people go wrong with mobile phone games today is that they will take, you know, Tomb Raider, something like that, and then they'll do a port over at the mobile phone. And it's just, no, it's people pick up expecting to see the kind of thing that, you know, that they've got on the PlayStation. And it doesn't work, but whereas, you know, for me, it's definitely, it's old arcade games, it's things like Asteroids and everything that work brilliantly on the mobile because, you know, let's not try and port over, you know, 128 bit you know, console games, let's try and, let's do the older ones. And I think for mobile it will do well for us because it's suited for the format and when we're finding with Sensi Soccer and we're also doing Cannon Fodder, to take an Amiga game and put it on a, a mobile phone, if you put a bit of care into it, it's doable. While we enjoy our little post kick about healthy snack, mm -hmm. let's talk about the old days, John. Back then, as a young man, what was the industry like? It was um, a lot more fast moving, less corporate. Uh, I actually went, and went back and looked at the um, soccer, the design we did for Sensible World of Soccer. Mm -hmm. It was literally three sheets of A4, I'd written on in biro. Yeah. And we signed a deal on the basis of that. <laughs> I think pe people need to bring the same level of creativity as I try to do with my penalty kicks. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially the one went over the bar, mate. That's very good. Raising bar. They say nostalgia is the vice of the old, but I'm not getting any younger. And I wonder if there are kids out there who will look back with the same amount of fondness on Pro Evolution. I really hope so. Well, that's it for another show, and like any good landlord, I've cleaned the pumps. Now I'm off upstairs to... See you next time. There now follows a three-minute silence in memory of those who lost their lives as a result of the Indian Ocean tsunami disaster on December the 26th, 2004. sama-sama melaksanakan pembinaan uh, cipta
That silence was in memory of those who lost their lives as a result of the Indian Ocean tsunami disaster on December the 26th, 2004.